It has been quite some time since I've made a video, but I thought with all of the things that I'm learning, I want to try to maintain my sense of creativity. And I think ultimately a lot of where it is that I'm at is realizing that I need to do just that. I need to express myself more. And so that's really what this is coming from and what this is stemming from is an expression of my creativity. So with that being said, I thought a few weeks back, I shared a little post about some of the books I'm reading. And I think it's really important for us to remember that just because our physical bodies are healthy doesn't necessarily mean that we're all around well-rounded health, healthy, and that could be our brain, our mental state. So one of the things that I'm trying to do for myself this year is read a book a month to really focus in on developing my brain. We spend so much time doing things that um, we invest time into, whether that be going to the gym, whether that be investing in sneakers, as I do quite often, um, and so other different, so many other different areas of our, our lives. And so I think this is what this is really a, a culmination of is just a, an expression of sharing what it is that I'm learning so that I can also learn more as well. So with that being said, this is the top three things that I learned from reading Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Now, I think one of the things that people don't realize is that with this book, uh, it almost seems like most people think that there's an emphasis on uh, productivity. And while I think that is a component, I think it's really more so a focus on learning about oneself. So a lot of these tips, a lot of these things that I learned were really a reflection of who it is that I was in areas that I need to grow. And so that's really, really what stuck out to me about this book is while yes, there are some things that, you know, you can learn in regards to, um, you know, how to schedule your weeks better and stuff like that. The real focus of the book is really about who are you and what it is that you want in life and how do you develop a life that is congruent with regards to all aspects and then really focusing in on the priorities of your life and the values of your life and what it really means to, I guess, essentially live. And so one of the first things that really stuck out to me was this idea that, and I think we all know this at the end of the day, but this idea that we are completely different than the rest of the animal world. When you think about all of the different animals, uh, all the different organisms in the world, whether that be lions, tiger, tigers, bears, oh my, we are so vastly much more advanced in the sense that we have the ability to not act based off of what it is that we feel, what it is our uh, emotions are, whatever hormones are, are rushing through our bodies. We have the ability to decide and reflect and choose how we behave in whatever instance or environment it is that we're in, whatever it is that we're experiencing, we have that ability to choose fight or flight, whereas animals will typically just run away whenever they're in a you know high tense, um, intense uh, situation. And so we as human beings really need to make that conscious decision. Do we want to stay as like base level animals or do we want to excel and be the human beings that we are? Like we have the ability to build houses, build, you know, communities, build infrastructure that, you know, sure, you could say at the base level, like a beaver can build a dam, but like we have the ability to take that to an advanced level that animals just cannot do. And so really, as we think about who it is that we are, we should choose to be the beings that we were created to be or the beings that we are um, able to express ourselves to be. Um, and that goes beyond just um, living at a base level. The second thing that really stuck out to me is just that idea of, um, you know, what we visualize and what we focus on is what we ultimately become. And so if we spend our time focusing on things that are unimportant or focusing on things that, I guess you could say don't drive value, but that is also very subjective. Um, it could take us down the wrong path. And whether that be focusing on the things that other people tell us more than the things that we believe to be true or focusing on things that are very irrelevant, focusing on things that, um, yeah, don't provide value, whatever the case may be, we should really consider what it is that we spend most of our time thinking about. Um, and 
moving towards a direction of making sure that we're visualizing the things that are important. Um, I recently started a class um, that I'm taking, uh, in-person class, um, and the focus is really about, you know, self-development, becoming who it is that we are. And again, kind of going back to what I said earlier is that if we spend so much time doing all of these different things in life that we forget to invest in the areas that are actually really more important, and that's, you know, our human self-development, spending time reading books, spending time, you know, doing things that are building for our lives. And, you know, I think that's ultimately one of the things that we just fail to materialize for ourselves. And it's very easy to attribute, um, you know, where it is that we're at based off of so many different external factors without focusing in on who it is or what is going on in our lives and how we can improve those things. And even just, again, just developing those things, having a better understanding of self, not just the negative side of like, what are my weaknesses, but what are my strengths? How can I sharpen my tools? What is it that I want to be? Where is, is it that I want to go? And while I myself am not a religious person, one of the things that always stuck out to me is this idea of like faith without works is dead. You know, faith um, within myself without actually doing the work is dead, but also at the same time is not having faith in self, but doing work will take us into the wrong direction. Uh, the last thing that really stuck out to me with this book is just the idea of effectiveness and efficiency. Um, he gave the story or an example of um, one of the sons, um, Stephen Covey, who the author is, um, gave the uh, example, a story of uh, he, a situation he had with his son where basically his son, uh, he had asked him to, hey, you know, take care of the lawn, take care of the backyard. Um, and when you do those things, you know, there'll be a reward for those things. And this is how I want you to do it and yada, yada, yada. Um, and kind of within the midst of that, there came to this, you know, this whole sort of situation. I think that was the story. Regardless to say, um, it came to the situation to where, you know, he kind of came to this point where realizing that like doing things very fast doesn't necessarily mean that that is an effective way of doing those things because we as individuals all process these process things different. We all have different psycho logic. Um, and you know, when we tell people to do things, we oftentimes don't tell them to do it in a way that's effective. We tell them to do it in a way that's efficient. So, you know, do this in the least amount of time or whatever the case may be. And oftentimes that's not necessarily the best for everybody. We all process things different. We all do things different. And so it's important for us to remember that, you know, when we're giving instructions to people, when we're working with people, we're looking at doing things the most effective way, not just the efficient way. There are times where we should be doing things efficiently, but when we're giving instructions to people, we always want to seek to understand how that person processes things and how they do things and make sure that we share with them the best way to do things and the best way that's possible for them. And that will oftentimes lead to better outcomes than trying to do things the quickest way possible, the shortest way possible. Um, and, you know, ultimately it damages relationships, it damages expectations, and it um, distorts, you know, the relationships that we have with other individuals. So, you know, I really wanted to keep this short, very short video. I know this is very different than what I posted on the channel, but uh, I think I'm going to be just doing more different things on top of fitness things, um, you know, CrossFit related things. I really definitely want to get back into doing that. I've been filming some stuff and we posting that there as well, but I wanted to just hit record, film something and just kind of share something that's more on the mental fitness side, not necessarily just fitness product review related or just fitness related in general. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this raw video that took me 10 minutes to record because I'm probably going to do very minimal editing in this video. But if you guys enjoyed this, please hit that like and subscribe button. Um, I'll leave the link to the, the book that I read, Seven Habit, Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen Covey. Definitely recommend reading the book. Uh, also definitely recommend getting the personal workbook as well because that has all sorts of different like worksheets that you can like work through and whatnot. So with that, guys, that's going to be it for this video. I will catch you guys later. Uh, as always, may your barbells be heavy and your coffee be black. This is David, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.